Welcome to the new Skinosh studio. I'm super excited to finally have managed to move. It took several months, unfortunately, but now we're here in the outskirts of Munich, so quite the countryside here. But I absolutely love this place. It turned out nicely. There is still work to be done. So yeah, let me give you a quick tour on what we're looking at here. So this area is basically just a chill lounge area. You have two, two seats here. Great to have a smoke, have a drink, relax, have friends over. So a perfect area and I really wanted to have an area like that in the studio. I did have one in my old one as well. I think that is important, not only work, but also have some downtime and yeah, relaxing a bit. So here on this side, let me just quickly move you. So here, maybe let's start with the old bookshelf. First of all, I have uh, Boris and Merela uh, sent here, which I can highly recommend, by the way. Really gives off a beautiful scent. So that, and that mixes with the leather that's in here. That is the perfect combination for me. So yeah, always have this here. Then we have a couple of books, mainly related to art, um, fashion as well. Some Margiela books, uh, George Kondo, Peter Lindberg, a Boris book, um, and then several around bag design, but also learning about machines and older, older kind of craftsmanship. So lots of cool books here. One of my favorites that I recently got was this Patina book where I basically try to gain knowledge to age hardware like belt buckles and D rings and all that stuff. So can highly recommend that if you are into aging metal in any form. Then yeah, we have a couple of um, art pieces back there, but not too much I, I wanted to share today. Let's focus more on the other elements uh, because we have quite a lot of stuff in here. So I forgot to mention, it's basically two rooms, right? So you have this first entry room, which is partially work, partially hanging out, but also placing products, having spots for photos, etc. And then there is the second room, which we'll look at in a second. Uh, which is really focused on work, productivity, everything is laid out so that I can do my work as efficiently as possible. By the way, this table here that I have is over a hundred years old and it used to belong to an Italian shoemaker. So quite the lovely coffee table that I have here. Then here in the back, you see a painting that you have probably seen a couple of times, which is an unofficial print from George Kondo. Absolutely love this piece. Um, I really wanted to display this prominently, so I think well achieved. I did have a bigger condo, if you remember, in my old studio. Unfortunately, that didn't fit through the doors here, so I had to let it go. But yeah, this definitely came with me. And then, as I said, a couple of uh, displays where I want to display pieces that I made. Here we have um, the lovely shopper bag. This is quite the big piece, so I usually hang like four or five bags down here but I think this fits it quite well. And then at the top, we have the smaller pieces where I usually hang like keychains and in this case, the mini bags. So a good way of displaying product in my opinion. And now we have come to the main cutting table, which is quite the big table that I used to have in my old studio as well. And this time I really wanted to keep it clean so that I have enough space to cut bigger pieces, like when I have huge heights or you need to cut belts. It's important to have a large table, obviously, um, but also that it's clutter free. So this one stays free all the time. So yeah, I have two main uh, workspaces in the other room where I usually do like the mess, <laughs> I would say. Um, but here, this is reserved for cutting and um, to have a couple of pieces on display as well. Right, so here we have a small display where I just threw stuff in at the moment. Then down here, we have a big bench with new pieces coming soon. Then here the display of the keychains, as well as the lovely crocodile wallet. And speaking of display, so I have hung a huge old rusty chain down here with a couple of bags on it, just to display them, which is lovely in my opinion. And then here we have the boardroom briefcase. Comes out nicely on this display, which is quite huge. And then here in the back, you have a collection of my military handles. 
And yeah, maybe if you are interested in books, I can quickly show them a small selection of books that I have here. And some flowers, of course. All right, speaking of this place, here we have a broken glass display with a crimson briefcase in it. Love this setup so much especially looking at it in detail. And that is standing on an old vintage metal cabinet, which I have acquired like five or six years ago. So goes quite well together. And then here in the background, we have old cousin Alfred. So let me quickly show you Alfred. So this is Alfred here in the background. He's my main man, always displaying my stuff. He's wearing a balaclava and a piece that I actually made for myself when I'm, when I'm working but I thought it looked cool to have him dressed like that. And also for me, it's, it's important that I always need to take pictures, right, of people with bags, with the pieces, to give some context of size, etc. But this gives me an easy way to just put the bag on, take a photo, etc. So pretty happy with old cousin Alfred here. All right, next up we are coming to my pride and joy, clicker press. Love this thing, it's a five ton clicker press. German company, solid, this will last forever. So it really speeds up the workflow as well. And then we have a small cabinet here in the corner, just with a lamp on it currently, a couple of tools, um, but nothing major. All right, so we have a printer in here for invoices and a couple of presses, as well as the lovely old vintage lamp. And here's a look at the clicker press again on this old solid workbench. So yeah, that really uh, completes the tour of the first room. Pretty excited it is, as I said, still a bit fresh, right? Something decoration, etc., needs to be happening. Um, but mostly it is done and I am happy with that space. So now let's move on to room number two where the magic is done. Right, so you are coming through a small hallway, like three, four steps, and then you're greeted with portraits um, that I have received from an artist out of Sweden a long, long time ago. Back then we made a trade, a bag for a couple of portraits of me. So those are hanging here on the left hand side. Then we also have one on the right. There is a fourth frame that I've ordered, so I will hang two on each side. And then here on the floor you have the cement block with the wings bag in it. And then here on this side we have an old fur machine, sewing machine, that I've bought a couple of years ago. I still haven't used it, but the stitch is beautiful that it makes. So I'm looking forward to working with this one. Then we have a small rack for belts. So this is basically just for production, right? And on the left-hand side, I'm planning to put um, the work in progress ones and then the finished ones, etc. So speeding up the workflow a bit. And then here on the back end, we have a workbench uh, where I usually dye my leather and do experiments. So this is kind of messy. I apologize for that, but that's what it looks like. So you have a couple of experimental stuff standing here and dyeing, as you can see, is quite messy. So I'm trying to keep this place separate from the others. And then this is just a temporary setup. We have a piece that I made with uh, Daniel John Franceschi. Uh, I have made a video about that. And then at the bottom we have just a shelf. So on the right hand side we have my main work area, I would say, for smaller stuff. But right? I have all my tools here that I need, the main pieces of hardware that I use, so that I always know what do I have in stock, what do I need to reorder, etc. So everything is well organized, but still work in progress, I guess. But yeah, pretty happy uh, how this turned out. So what I usually do is I start on the main cutting table over there. If I need to make a pattern, for example, I start there and make a pattern. If not, I can trace uh, on the leather and then cut all on the big table. Then if the piece needs to be dyed, I go to the one table that, that you just saw, quickly dye it, finish the edges, everything that is related to color and finishing, basically. And then here on this bench, I have everything that I need for sewing, for example, Right, so you might be familiar with one of those if you are into leather craft. So everything related to sewing is happening here. We have all the pieces of hardware in this beautiful tray, by the way. Love this thing. 
So yeah, all the small like buttons and stuff, everything is here. So I am quick when I need something, everything is organized, etc. So if we are continuing to look, this light is so horrible. If we are continuing to look at the different pieces, so right here we have a lovely piece that I um, recently bought a couple of months ago. So this is a splitter, basically, and a cutter, so two tools in one. It is super heavy duty and works like this, basically. You put the leather in and then you, yeah. So this is uh, one of my latest additions, as well as the good old Adler sewing machine. So this is uh, another industrial type sewing machine, heavy duty as well. Still haven't used that one either, but I am looking forward to making bigger pieces. And then with a sewing machine, um, I'll keep you updated. And yeah, that is uh, the room number two. So small details here, and this is the way out. As you can see, if we are going up one more time. And yeah, that is my new studio. I hope you enjoyed the small tour that I made. Um, this one is quite difficult to film, I just found out. Um, as you know, I have done a couple of videos in my lifetime, but this is rather difficult. So I apologize and I hope you still liked it anyways. And yeah, expect this uh, to be the new location for videos. Super excited. I will be doing videos more often. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this small studio tour here in the outskirts of Munich. If you ever are in the area, feel free to drop by, look at some pieces, have a glass of wine, a beer. They usually drink beer here, so I come prepared, don't worry. And yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.